I made a very simple jig for cutting wedges with a bandsaw. The, uh, the jig is just a piece of 2x4 for the base with a piece of plywood attached to it at a right angle. It uses a vacuum pump to hold the blank on with vacuum pressure. I use a piece of weather strip tape. It's just a piece of closed cell foam rubber weather strip. And the inside piece is a piece of plywood that the block of wood uh, pulls down to and makes contact with so that you don't fully compress the, the weather strip tape. That gives you a lot more solid connection instead of having it kind of mushy and able to flex around. And finally I've got a hole through it with the fitting to put the vacuum line on. This rides along a, a straight edge that's clamped to the tabletop. Just pull the hose loose to stop the vacuum. And uh, it's really, it's, it kind of surprised me how nice and flat it can make that cut. Normally you use a bandsaw um, just freehand. Take the next piece. The angle on this doesn't have to be exact, it can be just approximate. Um, I've got another jig that I'll put this, put each piece on to, uh, to true it up to exactly the right angle and I'll show it next. But this, it doesn't leave a step uh, where, like you would get with a table saw where you cut halfway through and then flip it over and cut the rest of the way. It, it, tends to leave a, a step where the two cuts meet and you don't have that to deal with using a bandsaw. And that works really well. This is the jig that I use for getting the angle of the wedges exact. Um, it's just made of a this plywood piece with a couple of uh, triangles. The triangles are cut really really precise with the uh, polygon cutting jig that I've made before. You could also uh, use a paper pattern attached to it just uh, sand down to the line and get accurate enough probably because you're still going to end up um, you know flattening with sandpaper to to get the halves perfectly flat before you join the shell together. But anyway this is 
just a, a vacuum line you now it runs to this vacuum jack that I've got here and uh, I've got this piece of thin plywood so that the, the gasket doesn't have to compress too much and it's got a, a solid surface for it to rest on so I'll demonstrate how that works a certain amount of overhang here. Make sure it's centered on the gasket. And also with this rider bit, um, this right here will become the sharp edge of the wedge and that's very very fragile. And so you'll want to cut it in a way where the router is, you know, pushing in on the edge instead of pushing out on it as it cuts. If it pushes out on against the edge, it can blow the edge out, and mess it up. So I'll go ahead and wrap this. The uh, the cutter that I'm using, this is like a tongue and groove bit. It makes the the tongue. It's a large diameter. You can use any kind of bit, any like a mortising bit or a large straight bit, but uh, a large diameter just makes it work faster. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this. quick work out of flattening it and the uh, the angle of the wedge will now be exactly the same as the angle of the triangles so you'd have a different set of triangles for different angles these are uh, 15 degrees for 24 segment shell It makes a nice surface that shouldn't take a whole lot of sanding, nice and flat. I think I'm going to like that a lot better than using the tail saw. I went ahead and made another wedge out of pine to use as a test piece to check the angle with. I, I made a full size wedge like the, the cedar one that you saw and uh, sliced it up into thin pieces so I could put them together edge to edge to make sure that um, 12 of them would add up to 180 degrees. So I'll assemble them here and then check the the edge with a straight edge. My makeshift router table is just a piece of um, particle board shelving material attached to the bottom of my router. 
and then the router is flipped over upside down over a, a trash can to support it and it worked pretty well. I'll probably make something more permanent that doesn't shift around later. Now I'll get my straight edge out wherever I put it and this piece of wood will work and as you can see that makes it 180 degrees. I'll go ahead and um, put on 12 more pieces to make it full circle and show you the, the patterns that you make with the end grain. There I just noticed that one piece was backwards. thought it didn't look right. Wrong way. There you go. When you make a shell, you'll make it up in into two halves that you put together and so you have to have a even number of segments. Here's where I discovered I've only got 23 and here's that extra one that I've hid from myself. Now I'm going to flip every other piece over to make it into a different pattern and that's going to resemble something like a like a flower instead of um, a spiral. When you make a shell, if you can imagine this being what the the end view of the cylinder of the wedges looks like, you know, it'll be this pattern, you know, projected onto the, the surface of the shell. Looking at it from top down. Why don't you zoom in on it so we can see it better? Yeah, there it is. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe.